On this episode, the engine is out of Roxy GTO and it's time to tear it apart and see what we find. Let's disassemble this rig, Aaron. All right, do you want to let me work on the accessories? And I can you start on head bolts? Start pulling those rockers off. Oh head yeah, bolts. rockers? Yeah. Yep. That'll Great. work. Always more water. Yep. Fixed either way. I'm just so curious what the rings, the cylinders look like. Man, there's a lot of carbon buildup on those pistons. It's from that oil, I bet you. Dang. Oh, I won't feel a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I think it's my take it home and new rings. is the 6.7 carbonator. The carbonator. Roxy, the carbonator. Gee, what'd you do? <laughs> you gonna run that cheap gas? No, are you kidding me? Only the best mm -hmm. for Roxy. That's gotta be built up from oil. Or maybe that's just normal, I don't know. Seems excessive. These two look good. <laughs> this one. Nope, yep, that one's messed up. Got a lot of in and out movement, up and down. That one's fine. That one's good. That one's good and that one's good. That one's got a scar on it, but it's good. That one's good. Good, good. Destroyed! Not only is that one wobbly, face is chewed off of it. Crazy! Yeah, it's not supposed to do that. You can see it's just chewed up. Fascinating. You know, that cam would have still ran if it wasn't for the lifter being shot. That's pretty nuts. Yep. It's, I mean, I, there's damage to the cam, but that's not what failed, it was a lifter. But 50,000 miles, can't really complain on a hot rod. You know what I'm super distracted by? The fact that this dog's tongue is hanging out. He's no longer asleep, he's just laying there. Finley, you are so funny. Watch your tennis shoes, that's gonna dump the coolant out, probably. <laughs> You're right. You're so small. Why didn't you drain your engine before you pull it? More disassembly. All these washers were used as shims because that's what you have to do with the windage tray and a stroker crank. A stroker crank takes a deeper swoop into your pan and so if you don't shim your windage tray lower, then your crank will hit your windage tray. Gonna use one of my whoa. Gonna use one of my gunk wipes to clean the cylinder walls, the carbon ring around the top. Uh, these wipes are pretty cool because they've got one side that's got some grit to it, some like exfoliant, like if you're into skincare. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna clean the carbon off with them. Is it working? Pretty yep. good.
those two rings are very close to each other. Mm -hmm. That could cause compression to get down through there. I'm looking for the two grooves on the oil ring to see if they're lined up. Okay, there's one, there's one. They're only about a quarter inch away from each other. That could cause oil to get through there. I'm not gonna guarantee that it is, <laughs> but I would have them 180 degrees away from each other. Total opposite ends. Those two freaking oil rings are lined up. Wait till you get a load of this bearing. Oh, we stopped it just in time. That bearing's bad. That, that is was, crazy that bad. Catch. How is that not making noise? I don't know. That's real bad though. Is our crank jacked? No. Luckily, no. it's a forged crank, so it's gonna take a lot to mess oh it up. Oh my gosh, crank is still super Those good. Those mother freaking oil rings are lined up right there though. That's look at them. That's crazy, babe. There and there. That's where a lot of your oil yeah. is coming from. I yeah. guarantee it. It is not supposed to be like that, I don't think. I might be crazy, but those bearings are toast, though. I'm so toast. glad we pulled it apart. Putting boost on top of that would have been a mistake. So far, the pistons look fantastic, though. Mm -hmm. Those are about two inches apart on that one, and the compression rings are opposite. So that one was They got fine. lucky. They weren't being intentional about it. If you look at the heads, it'd be interesting to see which one have more oil on them. I don't know if it matters those bottom ones being lined up. On a big truck, if you have rings lined up, it'll burn oil. I love those little bolts too. ARP 2000, so good. Mm -hmm. It's all right, but That's, it's definitely one. Do you remember which bearings those are? Levi 77s. Okay. Okay. Lined up. Lined up. Yeah. Sure enough. Crank looks beautiful though. Mm -hmm. That makes me very happy. Me too. It should. I mean, it's real good crank. Mm -hmm. Not lined up close. There are actually three oil rings, and the second to last one we took out, all three of them are lined up. That's so wild. We bought the engine. The guy told us, I just had it built. His truck got stolen. He said, It's he, built right. He you gave know? us the receipts. It was like yeah. lots of good parts. And Good parts and being built right is two different things, I guess. That bearing looks fine. One, two. So those are plenty far apart. Looks to me like these pistons will run again. Looks like it's cutting off my head. Might be. Oh, let me see. It is. It's your neck. Dang, this whole thing we've been talking back and forth. Last piston coming out. And those are lined up. Like just dead on. Okay. She is officially pistonless. That's right. That crank looks gorgeous. Yeah, I mean this thing was sure. balanced blueprint too. But then whoever assembled it obviously put the pistons where wherever they wanted to. It was like three was up here and number six was right here and so that's all thrown off. Crank looks fine. Have that polished. I'm not so worried about the position of the piston. They kind of have to go back in the same holes, I think. It ran good and built great power, so I'm not going to get stressed out about it. It's drag week, 22 days. With the exception of a few of the bearings, so far our parts look like they're in really good shape, at least our forged components like the crank and the pistons. And those are really the pieces that we're most worried about. Uh, the heads will be rebuilt and freshened up. And once we get all of the other components off of the front of the engine, the crank pulley and the front cover, and the motor mounts, of course, then we'll be taking this block to the machine shop to be honed and vatted so that we can get it freshened up and back in the car. Served me well, camshaft. Oh, we thumped many a mile. It's official. 
We're in freak out mode. We have two weeks until drag week and the car is still 100% apart and even less apart in areas that it needs to be apart in like the rear suspension. Oh my goodness. The transmission is out and the clutch is at Mantic getting rebuilt. We are going to rent to Summit today and pick up a bunch of parts that we need. Our suspension is in the mail. The blower should arrive today. The block and the crank are in the machine shop and we're gonna pick them up this afternoon. Aaron and I somehow always do this, getting parts last minute when the time is ticking down is like when we're going, all right, we need to get this done. Like we were working on the Bronco a month out from Drag Week when we needed to be working on the GTO. To be quite frank, it's difficult to stay positive. I always have a smile on my face, but there are times when I don't because when it comes down to it, this stuff is stressful and there are a lot of people that have big problems in the world. I'm not saying this is a problem, but this is definitely freak out mode, stressful, what did we get ourselves into kind of situation. I've got my heads right here. What I'm getting ready to do is pop a couple of the valve springs off and feel the valve seats to be sure that these heads are good to go. We think that they are, but this was something that was suggested to us. We're replacing the springs and the rockers and all that good stuff, so it has to come apart anyway. Then we're gonna hit the road to Summit. While I work on valve springs, Aaron was over here. We got the hitch in for the GTO. And <laughs> he's like, this thing sort of looks like it's already had a hitch on it or like it comes factory with the ability to just bolt a hitch on. So let's take a look at this. So it's got this little flap thingy I took the pins out of. And look, there's a nut right there on a stud. And I think my hitch bolts to one of those two studs. And then it goes back in there to these other bolts. It's like the car was built to have a hitch on it. It's really funny. <laughs> and uh, I was over there working on the head and I said, I wouldn't put it past the Aussies. I see them to be very like use driven people. They like make trucks out of cars with the utes and they use the crap out of them. And I love that. This chassis is a ute. So maybe these bolts just come here factory because oh, yeah. heck the car is made into a truck in Australia. Maybe so. How funny is that? I would love to hear some Australians down in the comments telling me about this. Is this a thing? Do the cars just come with like the studs that come down for a trailer hitch? If so, that's freaking badass. I love it. I can't wait to pull a trailer with this car. It's so right and it's so wrong. Oh my gosh. By the way, I would love to have a ute if anybody wants to ship me one. Just you know you guys it's a major delivery day you see what i see yeah huge delivery oh, oh my goodness 14 days put a rear end in the car transmission build an engine put a roll cage in harnesses <laughs> you can do anything for a short period of time you don't want to do that all your life but Oh, we man. will not be sleeping much for two weeks. Yeah, it's time to get all these parts out and on a rack. <laughs> and then on the car, more importantly on the car. Yeah, man. Oh, wow. Strange center section. Mm -hmm. oh. We're third member, should we say. That's probably heat exchanger. Wonder what's in this box. Low job. <laughs> <laughs> We can't use that. <laughs> <laughs> the most expensive thing at Summit that we bought, SFI certified bell housing. $700! Look y'all! <laughs> it's a race jacket! My first race jacket. Double layer, extra safety. Do I look legit? Right now, the only parts we are missing are the new rockers, springs, lifters, and a cam. All that stuff is coming from Tick Performance, and it should be here very soon, along with the actual block and the crank being picked up from the machine shop. On the next episode, you guys will see us unboxing all these badass parts and actually getting to install them on the car. One step closer to Drag Week. Now, if you follow us on social media, you will see that Drag Week has already happened and Roxy already kicked a lot of butt. I mean, she wasn't like kicking butt as far as being faster than everybody, but we did good. It was awesome. <laughs> so stay tuned as this build series unfolds because it's only gonna get better. 
and more fun and more adventurous. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you dig it. See y'all soon.